Okay, I'm ready now. What is up, Plan Fam? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys had amazing Thanksgiving and are ready for the holiday season. If you are new, my name is Lauren and this is my channel where I talk about all things planty. For this video, it is my 2021 plant wish list. The majority of these plants are uncommon to rare and I have exactly 20 plants total. I have anthuriums, which kick off the first category. Then I have Hoyas, which is a new addition to my plant wish list. If you want to see my old one that I made for 2020, where you can see baby Lauren trying to figure out her presence and lighting and everything, you can see that right here. Then we have Monstera, of course, philodendrons, and then the miscellaneous category. So five categories, 20 plants. This video is long enough, so I am just gonna go right through it. Please subscribe, that helps me so much, and I like this video, but let's get to it. Low-key struggling a little bit, guys, so I definitely need my coffee. Okay, so the first category that we will be talking about are anthuriums. Now, if you have been watching my channel, especially the past month to two months, you know that I am having a serious love and hate relationship with anthuriums right now. I do have a solution coming up where I think anthuriums will love me more. Henceforth, I will love them more, which will hopefully want me to get more anthuriums in the future. But right now, this category has two anthuriums. And the first anthurium that I want to discuss with you guys today is an anthurium regale. This is an anthurium that I have been wanting for a while. I especially love the vein structure and design. It kind of reminds me of a Cestercis mirabilis, where it just has very ornate veins. It's very whimsical and beautiful. If you look at more mature regales, and I'll try to put a picture right here to show you guys, it just looks so magical. It has like different twirls and just swirls and everything in between. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It has very nice heart-shaped leaves and huge lobes around its sinus, so I think it's absolutely beautiful. The second and last anthurium that I want to talk about I think is the most expensive plant in this entire wish list. As I'm filming this, which is the end of November of 2020, and I live in the US, I live in Texas, this plant is around eight to nine hundred dollars, but it is an Ethereum luxuriance. Now, this may be kind of silly to say, because when I look at this plant, it reminds me of a plant that would be like in the prehistoric times where dinosaurs are at. It just looks super hardy and like terrestrial. It has these ribs and 3D ridges in its veins. It looks super badass. Hopefully you guys don't mind that I said that. And the color of the leaves are just really, really cool. In the picture that you're seeing, it looks almost black. And I've seen variances in colors in between the spectrum, anywhere from like a mid-tone green to a darker green and almost black like this. I did say this will cost $800 to $900. That's what I've seen in the majority of the Facebook BST groups. So it may be a long shot to get this plant, a huge long shot, because I don't just have $800 to $900 to spend. If I ever got this plant, that would be the most expensive plant, the biggest plant purchase I've ever had to date. But that rounds up the anthuriums. Now moving on to the next genius of plant, which is a new category to my plant wish list are Hoyas. Now, in the first half of my plant journey, I really struggled with Hoyas. 
I did not know what they needed and I couldn't figure out the light situation, but I'm really happy to say that in the past couple of months, I've really gotten a great understanding of Hoyas, which just makes me so much more confident to get more Hoyas in this upcoming year. So to kick it off is actually a pretty common Hoya, but I think it's so freaking cute. And it is a Hoya Chelsea. Now, what's not to love about a Hoya Chelsea? I, first of all, if you guys see me look this way, I have my wish list pulled up on my computer. So I am referencing the photos while you guys are watching them. But the leaf shape of this Hoya is so, so adorable. It's like little hearts. And how can you go wrong with little hearts? Of course, with Hoyas, they're super waxy and thick and sturdy and durable. So that's what I love. And it kind of reminds me of a Hoya Crinkle 8 because if you look at the foliage, it has some waves and ribs along the center. So I just think it's a super adorable plant. I for sure would say this is a Hoya that I would purchase within the first six months out of the year. I just think it's the cutest little Hoya and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Next up is a Hoya Caudata. And I hope I'm saying that right. Caudata? Maybe? Caudata? I'll just say Caudata because that's what comes out of my mouth. But I know some people don't really jam and vibe with this Hoya. I think it's so unique and there's like nothing else like it. The leaves are lance shaped and it kind of has this nice teardrop look, which I think is super cute. What really attracts me to this Hoya is just the different colors that you can get and the foliage. It kind of has this metal metallic like foliage with the different speckles that it has. It looks white, silver, anywhere in between. The colors on this plant can range from a burgundy to a green, sometimes just a tad bit pink. It just looks kind of frosted to me and each leaf is super unique with its color and the speckled foliage. I can't wait to get my hands on it and Oh, I'm just looking at it right here and I think it's a really sexy Hoya. Moving along, the next Hoya is one that I want to cross off my wish list first because I want it that bad. And it is a Hoya Rotunda Flora. If you have not seen this Hoya, of course you are seeing it right here. I just think it's like a cool cat, just a cool cat Hoya. I don't think anyone even says that term anymore, but I think it is, I think it's whimsical. I think it's funny and I don't know why. But anyway, the leaf shape is what sells this Hoya to me. It's like you took a rectangle, but then you made the edges circular and that's it. I think it's just wonky and you just get these little circular rectangles that just grow out. They kind of look like little fingers to me. I love this plant. I always look at it on the Instagram tags and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. We have two more Hoyas left to go in this genius. The next one is a splashy Hoya. And you guys know that I particularly love my splashy Hoyas. And this Hoya is a Hoya Finlandsonii Splash. Now, all of the Hoyas that I have, well, the majority of them have very little leaves. And that's okay. I still love them, of course. That's why they're in my collection. But I'm really excited to add another big leaf, long leaf shaped Hoya to my plant family. So you are seeing the picture right now. I love a regular Hoya Finlandsonii, but when I saw there was a splashy version, I, of course, just had to put it in there. As far as the availability of this plant. I don't really sell it sold often. I have a feeling that I can only either purchase it on eBay when it's up for auction or this picture in particular is from Unsolicited Plant Talk. So I have never been lucky enough to make one of their restocks like 
forever, but I hope to purchase it because I think this plant is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. It combines my love for longer leaf Toyas with the splashiness, so it is the best of both worlds. Now we are at the last Hoya of this category of this genius, and it is a Hoya Sigillatus. Now, if you're looking at this photo, guys, I'm sure if you didn't know about this plant, that you would want to purchase it too because of the variance in colors. I think it's beautiful. You get so many different arrays of colors. You are seeing it on the screen now. It ranges from like a plum deep purple to a pink, a pinky red, and a muted green. And uh, it is just so gorgeous when it gets sun stressed and you have the different arrays of colors. That combined by the freckles and speckles of white and silver in this kind of splashy Hoya is absolutely beautiful. The leaf shape is these little, little ovals and I think all of those traits combined really make this a standout Hoya. Okay, plant fam, we are down to the next genius of plant and it is Monstera. And I only have two Monstera, like the Anthuriums that I want to talk to you guys about. But these two Monsteras are plants that I will for sure get, even though it will really damage my wallet. But, ooh, just, I really want these plants really bad. The first Monstera, which I did mention in my 2020 plant wish list, but just really, really want is a variegated Monstera Peru. Oh, guys, if you've seen my past couple of videos, you know that I've been saying that I am here. I am here for yellow variegation, which I never thought I would say, but I'm here for it. I love it better than white. I do think white is still absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, but the yellow variegation just completely stole my heart. As I am recording this, this plant will set me back around three to $500. And I would say that is for a two to three leaf rooted cutting with good to really nice variegation. Now we're at the last Monstera and I would love to get this plant for my birthday, which is in April by the way. So I still have a few months to save if I really wanted to get it and pull the trigger. It is a Monstera Aurea. And I just really want to complete the trifecta. I have an elbow, I have my tie, and I really want the Aurea. Yes, of course, there are the mint Monsteras. I think there's like a Monstera monster mint plant. I don't know. Yes, there are other different variances of this, but I'm not really there yet. I just really want the Aurea. Also, I know for this plant, this will cost me like five to $700. And that is for a one leaf rooted cutting with good variegation. I love Monsteras in general. I really want a big, massive, just good old regular Monstera Deliciosa because I am in love with the fenestrations. So besides the variegation, I just love this genius or the sub genius, but oh, I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Ugh, a girl can only dream, right? Now it's time for my favorite genius. You guys know it is the genius where the majority of my wish list plants come from, no surprise, and it is philodendrons. I will just always love philodendrons no matter what. It is an easy tropical species of plant to take care of. It's so forgiving if you miss an underwatering and there's so much variety within this genius and it's just beautiful. It's chef's kiss. 
I love it. So to kick it off, we are starting with a Philodendron Splendid, which is a cross of Philodendron Varicosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. Now, I currently have a regular Viru Varicosum, and I absolutely love it. When you look at the front, of a varicosum there is this beautiful contrast between the veins and just the regular foliage to me the veins look neon and it's super striking super stand out but what i love about varicosums is that i feel like the party's in the back let me know if you agree because it has a beautiful red back it reminds me of El Chaco vibes if you guys are familiar with El Chaco's and has a beautiful red backing of its leaf. Same thing for Varicosum and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now when it comes to Melanochrysums, I'm a little scarred because I got two attempts on a plant import and both times the Melanochrysum was dead. And besides it just being dead, what was really heartbreaking was knowing that just a couple of days ago, it was healthy and thriving and this amazing, beautiful plant and it was dead. So that's why I'm not, or not that I don't like it, I've just been slightly terrified of getting another melanochrysum. But with the splendid version combined with what I love about the varicosum, combined with the beauty of a melanochrysum, because I still think a melano is absolutely beautiful, really just makes me want to get this plant. Next up is a philodendron white knight. So I would love to complete my trio. I have a white princess, which is thriving, a white wizard that I accidentally gave root rot to, but it is bouncing back. So I would love to get the white knight. Now I am really happy with the white color on my wizard. I don't think it's a cream or an off white. It's it's pretty white so to know that a white knight is more known to have a brighter version of white is just really cool but what really sells me on this plant like most people that love this plant are the red sheathings i love my white princess because of the pink sheathing but the red just brings more of a contrast and just really makes it just a beautiful beautiful plant the next plant that I want to talk about is becoming a very high in demand popular plant and that is a philodendron Jose Bono. I first started my plant journey in March slash April and that's when this plant wasn't as popular, high in demand, and not as expensive as it is now. I remember, and don't quote me on this, this is just what I remember that when Gabriella Plants was selling this plant on their website at that time, I think it was like $75. And I was this close to getting it and I just should have grabbed it. Should have grabbed it. I didn't. I've been so close to getting this plant multiple times, but it's the holidays. Your girl got a budget because she has people to buy presents for. But right now, you can get some pretty good deals. It depends, but depending on the size and the variegation, you can expect to purchase this plant at a price between $100 to $300. I love this plant because of the foliage and the color. I feel like with the foliage, you can get both huge sectoral chunks of variegation along with little speckles and clusters all in one. You can see in the photo here, and I think it's super unique and cool that you can get both of those types of variegation in one leaf. Now the next two plants are very similar to one another. I really think if I wanted to purchase these two plants, I would have to get them as an import because I don't really see them being auctioned off on the BST groups just yet or on eBay. And even if they did, th I feel like the amount of plans available to sell to other people is very limited. So I am gonna kind of put these two together. The first one is a variegated golden dragon and the next one is a variegated bipenifolium aria. 
Now, again, here for the yellow variegation, so I'm just going to kind of scratch that off. Now, with the Golden Dragon and with the Bipinifolium, it does kind of have a similar-ish, a similar leaf shape. I feel like with the Golden Dragon, though, when it comes to the top of its sinus and around the edges, it has just more ruffles along the way, even when it gets down to the bottom half, where with the bipenifolium, it's just very smooth edges, the horse head shape. With both of these species, besides the yellow variegation, you can get a wide range of other colors in the variegation, like I mentioned with the Jose Bono. Now it's time for the last philodendron and it is a variegated philodendron domesticum. Now as I am filming this, this plant is starting to get really, really popular, really high in demand. I have seen in America in the social groups I'm on on Facebook that a couple of sellers do have this plant. It is being auctioned off and I think it's right now seven to eight hundred dollars. Again, this is just my experience please don't hold me accountable to these numbers if you're watching this a week from now a month from now a year from now these numbers can be completely different i can't really get a good grasp on the leaf shape if you're looking at the photo some look more like very long slender ovals but i just think this plant is super gorgeous with the yellow variegation and man I really want it. That rounds off the philodendron species. I hope I kind of went through that fairly quickly. Maybe because you guys know I love philodendrons and I love to talk. But now we are on to the final category, which are the miscellaneous plants. So here we go. The first plant in this miscellaneous category is an Alocasia alanzaniae. The background color of its foliage that I've seen is more of a dark green to an almost black, but the stunner of this plant has to be the veins. It has this beautiful pink metallic, very slender veins, and in the light, when it's shining, just absolutely looks gorgeous, and there is nothing else like it. I know an alocasia cupria kind of has the same just colors, the colors, guys, I'm talking about the colors, but the veining of an alizanii is amazing. Moving along is a syngonium. Syngoniums are a species that I've really been loving the past three months. I have my regular pink syngonium, I have a pink confetti, I have a syngonium aria, and my albo, and I want to cross this plant off my wish list, and it is a Syngonium Pink Splash. Now, even though I have the regular pink Syngonium and a pink confetti, there's still a lot of differences to me when it comes to the pink confetti and the pink splash. Like the name confetti suggests, it's more of just little spots and little clusters and speckles of pink, but with a pink splash, you can get more range. You can get a leaf that's all pink. You can get a leaf that has big pink sectoral chunks, which the pink confetti doesn't really, or you can get that beautiful speckles. I have been talking to one of my plant friends that has a beautiful pink splash and we're trying to get a trade going. So hopefully if that happens and I talk to him and it's okay, I would love to do an unboxing of my first planty trade with you guys. The next plant guys is just a unicorn plant. I don't really know anything about this plant when it comes to its price or its availability. This is the most widely used stock photo or inspiration photo and I'm going to say this wrong so I'm going to look at my screen. It is a variegated homolomena rubescens and I don't even think I have to explain why this plant is gorgeous and why I love it. Just look at it, guys. Are you looking at the photo? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the leaf shape. It very much reminds me of a philodendron gloriosum. It has these very round, nice, and beautiful heart-shaped leaves. But the color 
is where it's at. The variegation is where it's at. You can get the beautiful yellow lime green variegation to a peach. I would classify it as a peach, which I've never seen like a peach color variegation to pink and everywhere in between on the spectrum. Okay guys, we have two more plants left and it is from the same genius and the genius is Scandapsis. Like Syngonium, Scandapsis is a genius that I really came to love in 2020 in the last couple of months. So of course I wanted to stick to two. The first one is a Scandapsis Trebui dark form. I absolutely love my Moonlight. It has the gorgeous, you know, silver, silver blue sheen to it, but the dark form is sexy. It's sexy. I only have one plant, which is my Dark Lord, that is the only dark foliage that I have, but with the Trebui dark form. It's this really sexy, dark kind of black look and I just think it's so amazing. The final, final plant is a Scandapsis Silver Splash. Now, I do have a beautiful and thriving Scandapsis Pictus Exotica, but I really want a Silver Splash. What I really love about this plant is all of the foliage is kind of in the center, in the middle of the plant. It kind of reminds me of like a painter took like white and silver on their brush and just put little speckles of it in the inward of the leaf shape. That's what it reminds me of, again, with my weird analogies. I know this plant is really starting to get popular now. I see more people asking about it. Right now, I don't think the price is too crazy, but I'm sure that's gonna change in like two weeks. Woo, guys, that was a mouthful. I really hope this video isn't longer than 25 minutes. I'm really gonna try and cut it down, but nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what plants are in your 2021 plant wish list, and if there are any plants that I want that you want as well, let me know in the comments. I love you guys so much. If you have any ideas on content and what you want to see, please leave that in the comments section below. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram. My handle is underscore all things planty with another underscore. I post a lot about my different plans. I post about what videos that I should produce for you guys and just updates on my planty life. Again, thank you for all the support and I will see y'all in the next video.